The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Friday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. Options expiration Friday as well, and markets starting off to the positive side in quite a quick way. Last night, right after the market opened, you had a report that Gilead, they've got a drug that may help in the treatment of COVID-19. Markets accelerate higher. We got the S&Ps trading up 75 points. That's 2.7 percent in the green right now, trading at 28.63. NASDAQ up 159 points that's 1.8 percent trading at 88.93 the dow up 724 that's more than three percent trading at 24,133 we were we were almost 200 points higher at one point overnight you see the acceleration things began rent right at 4 30 the futures closed from five o'clock till six o'clock those markets were open back above 24,000 in the dow Start things off, let's take a look at the indices. We'll start things off with the Dow that we covered. We've kind of been hanging right where we are since about 6 p.m. Eastern time. All the news having to do with this report and Gilead, of course, up dramatically 16 percent. Coronavirus drug trial shows encouraging early results. This story coming out right after the close yesterday. Gilead, excuse me, Gilead trading higher. The University of Chicago's phase three drug trial found that most of its patients had, quote unquote, rapid recoveries in fever and respiratory symptoms and were discharged in less than a week. So that story hit last night, encouraging news for sure, and the markets accelerate higher. Jumping over to the S&P 500, there's your acceleration from a close of about 27.85. We're trading almost 80 points above that level, 28.63. We were above 28.80 briefly at one point. Pretty remarkable, right? You're 120 points away from 3,000 in the Dow. And uh, the lows, I believe we were at a 21. Were we at a 21? Let's put this back on a daily basis. 21.74, I had to check myself. And we're climbing within reach of 3,000, which was when they, we, we got this first little area here where we actually bounced from February 28th to March 4th, and then the, the ride down really began. Jumping over to some other action going on, we cover the NASDAQ 100, 88.89. Crude oil, talk about an acceleration to lower prices. Crude, last night at about 3 a.m., falls out of bed, already basically approaching all-time lows. Crude, we almost got a $17 handle. We were six pennies away from $18. And guess what? We're only 16 pennies away from crude climbing below $18. Remarkable. Gold contract pulling back as well, actually dipped below $1,700 at around 6.30 this morning for gold. We were up there Thursday morning at about $1,767. So you're talking about $70, $70 gold. Trading with some real volatility though, because in the last two hours alone, gold up about $18. Looks like nothing on this chart, but that's because you just traded down $70, up 15. Gold with some volatility on a Friday, and the euro US dollar, euro at 108.62. What else we have happening? China had their numbers coming out last night, and quite a number indeed. The Chinese economy, China saying its economy shrank by 6.8% in the first quarter as the country battled the coronavirus. China reported that its first quarter GDP contracted by 6.8% in 2020 from a year ago. Analysts were looking for a shrink of 65 so pretty close. The forecast from the 59 analysts polled ranged from 28.9% contraction to a 4% expansion. Can I ask you something? Who's the analyst that was looking for a 4% expansion in China in the first quarter of 2020? Nonetheless, Chinese economy came to a standstill early, earlier in the year as Beijing implemented large-scale shutdowns. And there's your, uh, there's your graphical representation of that decline. Um, the second world's second largest economy they talk about here. Yeah, here we go. I was looking for the contraction in the first quarter is the first decline since at least 1992 when official quarterly GDP records started. Do you, you see that? at least 92 when the official quarterly GDP record started. Um, an amazing run that China had, but 
like the rest of the world, dealing with some woes. We got earnings still. Procter & Gamble, U.S. sales surged 10% as consumers stocked up ahead of coronavirus outbreak. Adjusted earnings, a buck 17 a share. Revenue, 17.21 billion. Sales surged as consumers stocked up on staples like toilet paper ahead of the coronavirus outbreak. Changes in foreign currency hurt PG's overall revenue, causing the company to cut its sales forecast. Fiscal third quarter net income, 2.92 billion or a buck 12 a share. Net sales rose 5% to 17.21 billion. In its baby, feminine, and family care business, which include Pampers, organic sales rise 7%, even though demand for its baby products weakened in China, its second largest market. Uh, the company warned in February that its third quarter profits and revenue would take a hit. Wall Street anticipated earnings of a buck 13 or 17.46 billion. Uh, jumping over to Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble held up very well during all of this. And we're going to open a little bit higher today, up about a buck. Your bid ask, 122.50 by 122.51. The highs before the collapse in the market began at about 128.09. We were as low as $94. Zooming in to see the volatility. With the rest of the market, you traded up last night as we got that news on Gilead and a possible treatment for people getting better from the COVID-19 coronavirus. And then they come out with their earnings. That was 7 a.m. this morning. You trade from 125 down to a low actually of 118.80. As I mentioned, though, we're up about a buck right now from yesterday's close in Procter & Gamble. Other stories out there. So we covered Procter & Gamble. We covered Gilead. Schlumberger, they're out with their earnings. The oil field services company beat estimates by a penny share, quarterly profit of 25 cents a share, revenue below street forecast. Slumberjay slashed its quarterly dividend by 75% to 12.5 cents from 50. That is quite a slash. Slumberjay took a one-time charge of $8.5 billion during the quarter related to impairments resulting from the coronavirus outbreak and the severe decline in oil prices. That is quite a one-time charge, $8.5 billion. SLB, jumping over to that chart. Whoops. SLB. So you see it actually traded higher with the market, kind of right where we are. I mean, the market anticipating, if you're in the oil services sector, you have been getting pummeled. And there you go, from $40 down to 11 You were at $50 back in May. Let's see, even put this on a little bit along. You want to see a crazy chart. There we go. From 118 in June of 14 to $14. Uh, tough run all the way down. And uh, while we're looking at that, there's your chart accrued. Um, what are we looking at here? So what is, did crude, this is showing crude at 2501, is that correct? It's not what I had, uh, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, there's 1788 I have in the May price of crude sinking lower as we speak. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back from the break, jumping over to the VIX as we await the market open. This market charging higher. The VIX approaching the lows that we had on Tuesday of 37.31, currently trading at about 38.35 right now for the VIX. Dow up 700, s and is positive by 72, NASDAQ positive by 150. We'll go into some of the stocks moving this morning. Dow up 3%, S&P's up 2.7%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 73. The Dow positive by 719. Getting back into some of the equities with some moving action. You know, I was just jumping around this morning, checking in on a variety of equities, seeing how they're trading with the market accelerating so much. And you can really see when you get the type of news story that can really drive something higher in terms of potentially opening back up the economy, a treatment, opening back up businesses that have a lot of people in the same area. Look at the move in Disney this morning. You're up $6. You're up almost 6%, 5 to 6% pre-market right now. On that news, in terms of Gilead, Uber shares, a couple things rocking Uber. Check out that run from 27 up to almost 29.45, currently trading at 28.45. Some of the stories out there, stocks making moves. I'm just going to slide down to Uber since we covered it. Uber said results in the March quarter will take a roughly $2 billion hit to write down the value of various minority equity investments that have been impacted by the coronavirus outbreak. The ride-hailing service also said a financial assistance, pro assistance program for drivers and delivery workers would cut up to $21 million off revenue for the first quarter and up to $80 million for the second quarter, folks, a company like Uber um, to, to assist their drivers during a time like this, 20 to $80 million does not seem like much. And I am an Uber bull in the long term. But nonetheless, jumping back to some of the companies with earnings, bank still at it, Regions Financial, 14 cents a share. The estimate was 23. Revenue also below forecast. Regions increased its credit loss provision to $373 million from $96 million at the end of the prior quarter. Not as big of a rise as some of the banks out there in terms of the amount of money they're putting away this quarter compared to previous quarters. Nonetheless, checking in on them, RF is their symbol. You see it was trading higher, pulled back a bit on their numbers out so far. Moderna, they're going to get almost half a billion dollars in government funding to help accelerate the development of ex of its experimental coronavirus vaccine. One of the things, you know, I personally have been holding out hope for is that all the timelines you hear, hopefully they're understated because the world's never seen anything like this before. You come together, maybe you get a vaccine out quicker than usual, maybe you get a treatment out as we're seeing quicker than usual when you have the whole world shut down. If I was a brilliant scientist and I had any idea of what it takes for vaccine or treatment, you have to imagine that there'd be no greater achievement than helping the world open back up and make that happen. Check out Moderna from basically $40 up to almost $50 there in that market action. 
So Boeing, they're going to resume limited commercial jet production in the Seattle area on Monday following a three-week shutdown. The jet maker had suspended all production in the region in response to virus concerns and travel restrictions. Boeing, quite a pop. Check this out. From last night, you were at 134.24. We might open at 150. You're talking about 11, 12 percent from where we were yesterday on options expiration. It's a lot of volatility out there for some of these equities after the close yesterday into this morning. Apple, as well, downgraded to sell from neutral at Goldman Sachs, which points to the potentially significant effort of the coronavirus on demand. So they're talking demand because not supply. Apple started pushing out phones from China last month, I believe. Um, but nonetheless, demand. They're now at a sell on Goldman and checking out Apple shares. You see the drop off, right? We were hired at 296. We just sold off 11 bucks. Apple actually negative today when you have S&Ps up about 70 points. And keep your eye. Apple, definitely one of the companies, has not held up as well as some of the tech stocks in particular. I mean, you're this low. Yeah, if you ever bought the low at 212, you're doing just fine. Um, but you're still a solid $40 away from that high as compared to, I mean, you pull up Microsoft, right? We're inching towards it. Microsoft's going to open at 180, folks. The high is 190. You're right up there, let alone. How about we got to talk about Amazon, right? What are we looking at open at today? So you're actually in the negative, maybe breathing a bit for Amazon since we just traded from up 20% this week alone on Amazon from almost 2,000 to above 2,400. Remarkable run there. Netflix shares, check out that run. Pretty similar almost to Amazon, right? hitting the top of its range and just exploding through it this week as you had Netflix at about $430 is where that's going to open it this morning. Walmart shares as well. We're going to open at about $130, so Walmart pairing its gains. I mean, what you've seen as when, when some of the companies that have held up well and are up 15 20 percent during this coronavirus pandemic, those companies are the ones that you're going to see pair some of those gains when the market figures out that we have a possible treatment, that we have a company like Disney. I mean, check that out, right? From 153 down to 80, just for some context, we're only at 108, which is right at where we were basically the bar of April 8th. You reached a high, excuse me, April 9th, you reached a high of 107.99. So basically just right back to there, Disney with a lot of room to make up. And even the likes of Uber, Uber's gonna open to 28. You see it's sitting from the, the highs of about 42. Other stocks out there with action, Intuitive Surgical. They reported their quarterly profit, 269 a share. They beat estimates by 15 cents. Revenue also topping expectations. ISRG is their symbol. Yeah, so you're going to open up. Let me just put this in shorter time frame. Quite a pop for them from under about 510 to about 535. And checking in on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon right now trading 2367 by 2372. Other airline action, Southwest asking its unions to consider potential concessions to aid in what's expected to be a slow industry recovery, according to Reuters. The story out yesterday, Southwest, LUV, and the airlines. Uh, had figured out uh, a deal with the government in terms of funding. So that was happening. I'm trying to pull up what day that was. Was that Monday or Tuesday? American? Yeah, that was, I guess, uh, Tuesday evening they inked that deal. You saw all of these airlines, American, Delta, Southwest, JetBlue. So that was the end of Tuesday action. You pull up Southwest. There's the end of Tuesday action. You were trading at about $34 and change. Made it up to almost $38 you're at $30 yesterday. I mean, you, you know, you drop off eight bucks, even if you, you from 35, you, you fall $5 in two trading days after the news is revealed that these companies have secured up to $25 billion between all of them, I think. But Southwest, they're going to open up a bit today with the market, you could say, on that news. Facebook, they canceled all large in-person events. Check out this date, folks through June of 2021 and said employees would be required to work from home through at least the end of May. So it's one thing coming back to work, right? It's one thing reopening the economy. These types of large in-person events, unfortunately, whether it's, you know, something like a hockey game, a baseball game, a football game, having events with 30, 40,000 people in the same arena, I'm not sure we're going to see that 
in the near term, let alone huge conferences, bringing people together from all over the world, especially when you get used to doing that type of action remotely, whether it's with Zoom, whatever conference technology that you're using. Facebook, ahead of the game. I mean, it's remarkable. You're talking about 14 months. They've just gone 14 months out and said that we're not going to have a large in-person event until the middle of next year. Something to keep in mind as they get maybe one of the first companies to really put that off. Travel industry, right? Think about that. The travel industry, they're not going to deal, they're not going to see that type of um, travel for corporate, whether it's corporate, whether it's uh, leisure, but nonetheless, really hitting things in terms of a year and a half. Lululemon said the CFO will leave the company on May 8th to take a job in a different industry. We'll jump over to that chart as we come into break. Lulu actually trading higher with the market, but for some context there, there's your drop off from 266 down to 128. Gonna open today at 215 though. Stay tuned folks, come back from the break. We'll see what else we have on tap for Friday action. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as our number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated Concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 70. NASDAQ positive by 147. We got about 35 minutes to go until the opening bell. Jumping over to other stories out there, news items would be 10-year Treasury yield, 0.62% right now. Europe overnight finishing in the positive. We have the FTSE up about 3%. Uh, DAX up about 3.5%. CAC roll 3.8%. Japan as well. Check out the Asian industries, the Asian indices, I should say. Nikkei 
up 3%, HSI 1.5, Shanghai 0.6, Kospi 3%. Um, and for a little context, the volatility we've seen recently, the S&Ps since uh, April 1st this month, talk about some volatility um, just even this week alone, right? Up 3% on Tuesday, down 2.2% on Wednesday. We're going to open right now but at about 2.5% in the positive for the markets. And one final story as we wrap things up, Google told to respect Europe's privacy rules as it works on a coronavirus Thing app. One of the things talked about, of course, in terms of just remarkable, the technology, if you've seen the visuals, in terms of being able to trace people on their phones and they know where they are at all times. Um, hopefully you don't see this type of thing used to invade personal privacy. It's very important they keep track of that. Google shares today. We're going to open, putting this on a shorter time frame, up a bit so far. Whoops, up a bit so far this morning on Google. With the market, there's your acceleration to about 1290 on Google shares. And speaking of volatility, we'll wrap it up by checking out the VIX as we continue. Market action, S&P is positive by 70. You get the VIX right now trading at 38.71. We'll jump around to some of those other FANG stocks so far this morning. You have Amazon off a bit from where we were yesterday. Microsoft holding up well, up $3 so far. Apple with their downgrade, suffering a bit negative about a dollar so far. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento live with Trade What You See coming up from 9 till 10 a.m. for that opening bell. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Fast Market at 11. Basil Chapman at noon. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien all this afternoon. Friday trading, options expiration, S&Ps positive by 70 points. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up right now. We'll be right back.